I'm in with the birds and the mammals, although I haven't seen any of those. I'm sure there are plenty around. But I'm on a small pool to start the working week. As you can see from the screen, the umbrella's up. Just had a real heavy downpour for about five minutes. In fact, that's predicted today. Haven't we had some rain recently? And also very strong winds as well. But I'm protected. I'm watching an orange tip sticking above the surface of the water. And as I changed my float and shotting pattern recently, I've stayed with that. Or should I say, I've gone back to fishing on the bottom, but I've stayed with the heavier float for the reasons that I mentioned in the blog post. I've put some brown crumb and mixed maggots out there and I've got a couple of whites on a size 14 hook. It's all about the waiting game now to draw the fish in. Not that they've got far to come, it's only a small venue. One of my semi-retirement hobbies, the other one is gardening and the other hobby that I'm referring to now is watching old TV series and movies and it's one of the former that I'm working for at the moment. Minder, do you remember those? Predominantly from the 80s but they did span over three decades if I remember correctly maybe just at the end of the 70s, 80s and into the 90s even. I'm speaking off memory there although I have seen the first series so I should know that shouldn't I? But I've just finished season three and I'm enjoying those looking back and sometimes it's nice to see the outdoor scenes isn't it what London used to be like and you think look at London and it's only 40 years ago and you see how much it's changed one obvious noticeable difference is that there aren't so many cars on the road and I know they film at certain times but they don't do what the or they didn't do what the Hollywood movie people do by the area and block everything off. You can see sometimes when they're outdoors filming how people stop, especially when you get into season two and three because it's already been on television. So people are, are well used to Arthur Daly and Terry McCann and people stop and stare because they're, they're out there in the public being filmed. So I'm certainly enjoying those at the moment and the rain's just started. The float is motionless, but I will be back. And I would say now, after a number of visits to this pool with a roach. What size will it be though? That's, that's the thing, isn't it? Lots and lots of small ones, but some very big ones as well. Again, relatively speaking for the water, but actually a couple of very big ones anyway, regardless of that. So certainly the unknown at the moment, and I'll be back with something from the mysterious deeps in due course. I've been here a while even though the fish might not have been caught ever. I don't know, but they still have a nash and a little. I've been here a while, and even though the fish might not have been caught ever, I don't know, they still have a, a natural caution and wariness, don't they? Nice roach. Back to the comment I made while I was holding the fish. You think of koi carp, they're so tame, they come up, don't they, and take the pellet out of your hand because they've grown in an environment where they've never known a predator. They've never had that natural caution. It's been bred out of them almost, hasn't it? They've become tame. I've got a goldfish at home in a little garden feature and it's exactly like that. Well, we had two. One of them just sadly passed away, <laughs> but it's on its own at the moment. But these fish here, like all others, are in a a wild environment. They need to have eyes in the back of the head. Let me hold that probably because the gusts are coming through now. Because not only fish eat fish, but also otters, cormorants, grebes, herons, they're all out there. They're all after you as a fish. So you have to develop that natural caution and wariness, don't you? And that's why you don't just turn up and empty the place even if it's somewhere that hasn't seen an angler before the fish will still have that caution and wariness won't they will i add to that total i don't know but at least i'm not a blanker today that's 
a big positive, isn't it? Whenever we go fishing, certainly on places like this. It's very wet and windy now. And although not quite as bad in terms of the movement on the surface, there is a, a, a lot of ripple on there now and a little bit of movement. But it just reminded me of when I was much younger, I was still at school and I went to play football Saturday morning and then in the afternoon the conditions were like this, very windy and I went to a small pond and I was fishing, float fishing and there were waves on there, I say waves, something like that, so quite a bit of movement on the water and I was watching the float and it would be there and then it wasn't and then it was there and then it wasn't and then it wasn't and it wasn't so I struck and I caught a tiny little perch, perhaps something like that, just a couple of ounces or so. That's all I had on that afternoon. But I always remember that because it's an example of as long as your bait's in the water, you've always got a chance, isn't it? And commitment and dedication, perseverance, all those qualities are all important when it comes to fishing. If we allow ourselves to be governed by the weather, then certainly in the British Isles, you wouldn't be doing that many sessions during the course of the year if you're looking for perfect conditions. You think about it, how often do you go out when it's perfect and you struggle, and then other times you go and you think it, it'll be difficult today and you catch well. So you have to take those factors into account as well, don't you, when you go fishing. For me, I often say, the fish are wet anyway, doesn't bother them. And as far as you're concerned, wrap up well, take your brolly, whatever you have to do, just go anyway. That's a nice surprise. My favorite, the perch. I'm loving the visits to that particular small pool and I'm still exploring and I'm sure that there's still plenty more to come from there. Watch this space, as they say, on that one. Recently, I opened the comments on YouTube. I closed them again over the weekend just as a trial. I wanted to see that if having comments option available made any difference at all to views. It's hard to say of course, because of the type of videos that you put on. For me, it's mostly angling that gets the views, but that's why, if you're wondering, off, on, off, on, <laughs> that's why nothing sinister or anything at all going on. So don't forget, drop a comment below the videos and I look forward to hearing from you.